Will and I are exploring different ways to make a wind-up car, aren't we, Will? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Will's hiding behind the camera, folks. <laughs> but he's, uh, he's, he's part of the design team. Winding up a car just means um, collecting the energy and then releasing it when you want it. Now, we could use springs, <laughs> which would be more sensible. But we're trying this very basic method first, which is a suspended weight pulleys and then all the string is wrapped around the, the axle and there's little wooden wheels and <laughs> we'll see what happens. Are you ready? I'm ready. Do you think it will work? I think it will work, yeah. Okay, how far will it go? It will get to the gantry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bets. No. We haven't named it anything. <laughs> Mark one. Ready? Go. Go. Woo! Wow! Spectacular success! <laughs> Don't you think? Wouldn't it be fun to have a full-size wind-up car? One that you wind up and jump in and drive down to the shops and back. No engines, none of those silly lithium battery thingies, just the gentle hum of wheels spinning sweetly. Up, up and away! Okay, this is a small amount of wheel adjustment may be needed. Ready? And... In theory, you could wind it up in all sorts of ways. A windmill maybe, or a water wheel, or a horse. So versatile, so why don't they exist? In this occasional series, I thought I'd explore some of the problems and possibilities behind a full-size wind-up car. Feel free to jump in with your own thoughts and experiences, but don't be too negative, it's just a bit of fun, and it might be quite interesting. Wind-up cars need a way to store energy for the journey. The simplest way might be to wind a weight up into the air. It takes a lot of energy to do that, but you get a lot of that energy back again when you release the weight and it falls. And as it falls, it could turn wheels and move you along. <laughs> nice and simple. What could go wrong? <laughs> It's so elegant, isn't it? <laughs> I can see already some reasons why we can't scale this up. You can get a point for every one you put. <laughs> Come on, Will, you're being too quiet. <laughs> help, me, help me work this one out. <laughs> the principle has been established, but there are some practical disadvantages, aren't there? There are many practical disadvantages. Yes. <laughs> it's the, um, if we scaled this one up, because the plan, of course, is to is to get the local town, um, with a wind-up car. <laughs> but it's not going to work because it's too tall. It's too tall, and you're going to need uh, a very heavy weight. Many tons. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the efficiency rate is, is reasonably high. Yeah. Because... Um, it's limited mechanical efficiencies. The, the weight's moving a long way. Of course, you could lower the power by having a much higher weight, much heavier weight, and a bigger gear train. <laughs> it's still totally impractical, isn't it? So we're going to find a different way... <laughs> That exactly demonstrates the problem. But we'll try different mechanisms next time. See you later in this series. <laughs> Disaster. Disaster. I wonder why. Oh, I know. Yeah, the wheel's fallen off. <laughs> no wonder it didn't work. Back to the drawing board. <laughs>